Hi, this is Jeff Challen again, and what we're going to do at this point is complete our installation of Eclipse for CS125 by installing a series of plugins. So um, there are a couple of plugins we need to install and a couple that we need to update. And this process should not take very long. It's fairly straightforward, but let me walk you through it. So I'm going to fire up Eclipse. That's the first step. Um, the workspace that you choose doesn't matter here. Um, the plugins that we're going to get today, the first one is a plugin allowing us to use the Subversion uh, version control system. And that's a critical part of how you submit work for this class. So in order to do that, um, what I'm going to do is come over here to the software Eclipse Software Marketplace. I'm going to open up this dialog, and I'm going to do this several times throughout the, the following steps. So I'm going to look for Subversive. And here's the plugin that I want to install right here, the Subversive SN Team Provider 4.05. I click on this, the default options are fine. Um, now, these sort of error messages sometimes come up when installing these plugins, and to be honest, I really don't understand why. But uh, we can click yes, and go back, let's see if I can find that plugin dialog again. Um, okay, so it's working on getting all the dependencies. Now I have a license agreement to accept. I accept this, hit finish, and you can see down here at the bottom, there's a progress bar, and now I need to restart Eclipse. So um, when I'm done with this, I have the Subversive Subversion plugin, but I need a connector to allow it to actually connect to the repository that we're gonna use for the class. So the next thing I need to do is restart Eclipse, and now what I'm going to do is use a different dialog that allows me to install software. Um, I'm going to copy this link address. This is to a repository that has some additional tools that I need to install. I'm going to come over here, and this time I'm going to click on Install New Software, not on the Marketplace link. This brings up a slightly different dialog. I uh, work with the URL that I just picked, cut, cut and pasted from here. So copy link address, paste it over here. I click add. I can call this whatever I want. Uh, I'm going to call it subversion connectors. Hit OK. Um, I really only need the SVN connectors, not the sources. I click next. Um, now again, it's going to claim that there's something going wrong. Uh, this typically doesn't produce a problem. It does take a minute. Um, when it's done, uh, this is a completely okay solution. I click next, uh, next again, accept a license agreement and finish. Um, this is not the first time we're gonna see this warning about installing unsigned content. That is also okay. So I click install and off we go. And now I'm gonna restart Eclipse for the second time. Now we're done installing the Subversion plugins. The next plugin that we're going to install is intended to allow you to write readable and maintainable code. Uh, there are many projects that use uh, plugins or other software tools to enforce source coding conventions, and this is one example of a tool to do that. This is called CheckStyle. The projects that we give you to work on are gonna have CheckStyle configurations, and you're gonna be expected to write code. You're gonna be expected to write code that conforms to those standards. Uh, so I'm back in the Eclipse Marketplace. I'm going to, once it loads up, search for check style. And now I want this check style plugin. Once again, I'm going to accept the terms of the license agreement and click finish. And I see the same warning about installing unsigned content. That's okay. And then the dialogue will finish here and I can restart Eclipse again. All right, on to plugin number three. So the third plugin we're going to install is called Test NG. This is a plugin that allows us to write uh, effective tests. And again, writing good tests for your code is a really critical part of software development. This is a plugin that's going to allow you to do that. And it's also going to allow us to test your code. So I come back to the Eclipse Marketplace tab, open this up again. Uh, look for test ng, click install. It's going to resolve features. This takes a minute. But when it's done, I should be able to continue the installation dialog. I don't know why this is so slow.
awkward silence while we wait for the test NG plugin to finish resolving all of its dependencies. Here we go. Um, all I really need is the test NG portion. I don't need the Maven integration, but you can install that if you want. It doesn't hurt. Another license agreement to accept and more unsigned content to accept. And once this is done, I get to restart Eclipse again. I think that's the fourth time. All right. The last plugin only needs to be updated. So Gradle comes installed with Eclipse, but the version of Gradle uh, that Eclipse comes with is a little bit out of date. So we want to make sure that we update it so it works with the tools that we're using. So let's go back to Eclipse. Let's close this. We're going to go over to help install. Now we go back to the marketplace, excuse me. So I go back to the marketplace and this time I do something a little bit different. So I'm going to look up build ship. That's the name for the Gradle plugin. And I can see over here that it's already installed but I want to update it. And for some reason, the way I do that is that I click on the installed button there, and that will take me to this dialog that is looking for updates. When it comes back, I should have an option to update the BuildShip Gradle integration. I accept another license agreement, hit finish. This software is signed, and now I get to restart Eclipse again. So that's the, the, that's the process. There are four plugins, the Subversion plugin and the Connectors, which is a separate process, the Check Style plugin, TestNG, and Updating Gradle. When you are done, your Eclipse is ready to use for CS125. One important thing to note is that the exact same series of steps also works for Eclipse Neon, which is the previous version of Eclipse. So we'd like you to use Oxygen, but if you're working on some of the lab machines, they currently have Eclipse Neon installed. But you can go through the exactly same process to install the same plugins on Neon and achieve the same result. I hope that was helpful.